Hey guys, it's David. Welcome, or welcome back to Cactastic. Today, I'm doing some work in my front succulent gardens, and there's a weeding technique that I've learned that I wanted to share with you. This isn't your average hold them as you see them strategy. We're going to explore a method that, at first glance, might seem like it's adding a lot more work to your gardening routine. However, I've discovered that it actually saves a tremendous amount of time and effort in the long run. But before we start that, let's take a quick look at a few plants in my December garden. First, let's look at this aloe in bloom. The cultivar name of this one is Verity Nice. It has these pretty clusters of yellow flowers. It's a refreshing departure from the typical orange or pink hues that most aloes exhibit, making you appreciate just how Verity nice this yellow truly is. This is the second time this plant has bloomed this year, with its previous blooming in August. I'm actually surprised it's bloomed so much because I divided all of these offsets and transplanted this plant earlier in the year. This is an Echeveria named Hortensia. The red color on it is amazing right now. And down this way I noticed the Aloe Rubro Violaceae has tons of flower buds on it. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven different flower stalks are forming on this aloe right now. So that will be an amazing show when all of these buds bloom. This aloe has bloomed before, but it usually only has one or two stalks at a time. So it looks like this year we're going to have a really spectacular show. What else is going on in the garden? The orange flowers are Leonotus leonoris, or lion's tail, or wild daga. A senecio with tons of flower buds. The yellow-leaved plant is Yucca Bright Star, and it recently bloomed. It was the first time it has bloomed. I have three of these plants in my garden, and it has been the only one to flower so far. The flowers are white that blush a bit pink. They grow in clusters on a stalk and were pretty little bell-shaped flowers. This one is near the sidewalk, and I noticed several passerbys who couldn't resist stopping to admire its beauty. The burgundy leaf plant next to it is a Dracaena palm. I've noticed it's been putting on some growth recently, which is nice to see. I think the juxtaposition of these two plants with their contrasting colors, light and dark, looks so good next to each other. Okay, now let's check out the plant that I really wanted to show you today. Over here, in this part of the garden, you can see what I'm dealing with. This is a Hesper aloe, and it's surrounded by a whole lot of Bermuda grass. I've tried numerous times to clear away these weeds, but the thing is, many of them just break off, leaving the root behind. And when the weeds are growing this close to a plant, it's really tricky to completely remove the roots. So this past year, I've been pulling out the grass as best as I could. The Hesperala would look great for a bit, but the weeds always made a comeback. And this particular weed is Bermuda grass. It's very hardy and very invasive. It can even regrow from just a tiny little piece of root. So it's super important to remove the whole plant, roots and all, to prevent it from growing back. Now here's a little gardening trick that I've learned. When you've got bad weeds like this around a plant, I just dig up the entire plant. That way you can really get at all of the roots and remove the weeds thoroughly. It might seem like more work at first, but trust me, the time that you spend doing this is actually far less than the time you'd spend weeding around the same plant over and over again, only to have the weeds pop right back up. I find that this technique is especially effective with cactus and succulents. They're surprisingly resilient and can handle some root disturbance better than many other plants. 
All right, let's get to it. I'm gonna dig up this Hesperalo, clear out these pesky weeds, and we'll catch up once I'm done. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> Alright guys, take a look at this. This is what Bermuda grass looks like. Notice all of these white roots? These are actually what are called rhizomes. They're kind of like the plant's underground network. To make sure that these weeds don't make a comeback, I need to remove all of these from the soil. It's all about getting to the root of the problem, <laughs> quite literally. I'm going to spend some time digging in the soil, making sure I get every piece of rhizome before I put the plant back. Alright, there we have it! The plant's back in its original spot, and look at this! I got rid of all of these weeds. Check out this huge pile I managed to pull out. Now, I shouldn't have to spend ages weeding around this plant anymore. Also, a few offshoots broke off from the main plant during the process. I'm thinking I'll just find a new home for them somewhere else in the garden. I really hope you found this weed removal technique helpful. It's a real time saver compared to constantly battling weeds around the same plant. Ain't nobody got time for that! Thanks so much for watching! Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more plant goodness, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Bye!